<laughs> All right, it's uh, it's like this. I think it's the second time this week that we've had some breaking or developing news. When Roycey jumps on, you can add a head coaching candidate to the list here. So apparently, uh, Quasi is adding to the Vikings original list, and it's a Belichick coaching tree guy. Oh, good. Those guys have done wonderful. They have <laughs> excelled as head coaches in the NFL. Uh, Patrick Graham, the 43-year-old defensive coordinator and assistant head coach of the New York Giants I the last couple of name. years. I, somebody mentioned that. I was reading the strip this morning. Somebody threw that name out there. So it, he, he was with New England from 2009 through 2015 as in various defensive assistant. He was a defensive well, guy. If I worked for the Giants, I'd try to emphasize my Patriots background, too. I think, <laughs> I, I think I'd say, you know, I, I uh, worked for the, uh, you know, uh, I, oh, yeah, I was with the Giants. But, uh, yeah, I was with really the, I, I was the Toledo defensive line coach back in 2009. It was a great experience. <laughs> well, yes. OK, well, Toledo is I think Toledo is the guy that is the place that produced the guy at Iowa State, wasn't it? Campbell, wasn't he from there? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, well, I, uh, I was a little shocked at the, uh, quickness with which the bears hired this guy from the Indianapolis Colts one day after, uh, polls showed up there. So, uh, who was, uh, obviously they must've been doing the same thing that the, uh, Wilfs were doing and interviewing coaches before they had a GM. Right? Yeah. Also like, like even at that press conference yesterday for, for Quasi. You know, all the questions were through the prism of, okay, now that you're here, yeah. so how are you going to start the head coaching process? Mm -hmm. And he's probably sitting up there thinking, you morons. We've been yeah. having yeah. daily conversations with 10 different people for yes, a week. <laughs> they, uh, they have had. I, uh, I'm all in on D'Amico Ryans, however, after reading about his mama. <laughs> okay. His mama. I read that there's a great story I, I tweeted and I'm not sure that uh, it, it came out of the uh, Philadelphia Inquirer I believe was he with the uh, was yes. he with the uh, them Eagles. for a while as a player yes and uh, mom basically worked in a foundry for ten years picked up car engines and put them on the foundry and lost fingers and just a hard ass hard working woman who then went to church and uh and uh I'm, I'm all in on him i think that uh that might plus you know we need a guy who played football at a high level to go with uh this fella we need we need somebody who's actually been on the field and uh i think uh D'Amico, he was an all-american at uh at uh alabama right wasn't he he was a very good player at alabama i think so mm -hmm. I say, uh, I say that's that's my guy. I want him. Uh, so you're th sorry, Pat. What? Yeah. Thank oh you. no, no. Your thoughts on uh, Quasi? Yeah, it's okay. Nothing special. He was. I didn't change my opinion on him one way or another. It's a crapshoot, and I think that uh, here's what I think he brings. He, they're going to spend their money in smarter places than they spent them spend it with Spielman. You're not going to spend a fortune on an outside linebacker who doesn't rush the passer, right? You want yes. if you're going to give Anthony when he gave Anthony Barr all that money, we thought, okay, he's going to go get the quarterback now, right? He's going to join in the pass rush. What did he get? Two sacks a year, maybe, and four pressures. Uh, they they're going to spend their money in smarter places with this guy. They're going to yeah. spend their money where it makes a difference. Uh, you know the positions they're really distorted i think now there's a difference of opinion on safeties i think myself i think cornerbacks are more important than safeties and uh but there i've seen other surveys where safeties are you know when you when you look at the fees that they uh that they uh when they franchise somebody where the money goes safeties do pretty well there too but i i wouldn't spend i would rather have Two kick-ass cornerbacks and two kick-ass safeties, in my opinion. So yeah, and I think like the the fact that I think the Vikings have now had now that Brian O'Neill is a Pro Bowl alternate, they've now had two offensive line Pro Bowlers since 2010. Like start with the most important areas, and then if you have money left over to spend big on a safety or a linebacker, mm -hmm. offensive line, pass rush, right, weapons. Now 
Here's what uh, I, I do find here. By the way, I did make an intentional decision to get out of that chair over there and walk over here and get on the uh, get on the thing. It was an intentional decision. I, I love the intentional. The, you, you like know, the word intentional? Mark, Is that Mark, your new buzzword? Yeah, Mark uh, Mark uh, Wolf started off with intentional. Our our decisions are going to be intentional. <laughs> well, when I was a hard drinking gin drinker, my intent my intention. Whenever I had the next one, that was my intention. You know, that was my intentional decision. Might not have been a good decision, but it was the intentional decision. Yeah. Are you saying Rick Spielman wasn't intentional when he I traded back it, nine times for I more guess. seventh round picks? Actually, I think it was Mr. Barrero who suggested our last really unintentional decision was the Herschel Walker trade. <laughs> when they, when they, we intentionally traded for him and then gave up seven draft choices. We didn't know what we were trading for. But anyway. Uh, uh, I, I think that they'll spend their money wiser and, and really they're 40 million over the cap, right? Isn't that what we think? 40 uh, the they're, cap? they're, they're 12 million over the cap right now, which is the fourth worst cap situation. They have, well, don't they have some gear? Don't they, we, I saw a piece that they had 40 million and, you know, guaranteed money that they can get out of obviously, but, uh, there, it, there, there was 40, I thought. So. Maybe they're, the they're, cap's they're, going up. Maybe the cap's going up more than uh, people. They're twelve. Like. They're they're tw they're twelve over. And I don't. I didn't. I don't know what article you're talking about. But they need just to sign their draft picks. They need to shave like twenty million dollars off their current situation. If they want to actually sign free agents, they probably need to shave thirty or forty million dollars. No, before we can judge him, really, uh, the early. I mean, it's going to take four years to judge him. But uh, don't we have to find out what they do with cousins? You know, I mean, yes. What are they going to do with Cousins? What are you going to do? What are, What are you guys going to do? Well, are I know he. Gonna, I know he shot work? the word analytics down yesterday. He's like, yeah. He said, I don't even know what analytics. Like, this he. I need to. I need to become more of a football guy, and so I'm going to pretend like I don't know what analytics yet, are. Yet, Cleveland is considered the most forward of, of you know that that they're all in on that. And if you read Andrew Barry's quotes today, they're all. Yeah, they're, they're all he, the new web buzzwords. That, but he has know. he has moved. He I like the way that he's doing it. It's like it's let's forget about the word analytics. Let's just gather information and make a decision on players. But mm -hmm. um, if you're wondering what do the analytics say about Kirk Cousins? So there was an there was an article on ESPN.com that Judd found sometime. I don't know when it was written, but it was basically surveying the league sometime in the last year. Which teams are the most analytically inclined? Which front office people are the most analytically inclined? Quasi was voted by anonymous people around the league as the most analytically inclined front office person beneath the GM level. And the Browns were voted the most analytically inclined organization. And I'll give you one more here. They even had these anonymous folks around the league vote on what is the stat, like the analytical mm -hmm. measurement that is most frequently used and, and like half of these people refuse to even vote anonymously because they don't want the stat out there. But yeah. it's, a, it's a stat called EPA, which is expected points added. Don't ask me to explain <laughs> it. But Kirk oh. Cousins, among starting quarterbacks last year, ranked 14th in EPA overall. And he ranked outside the top 20 on third down EPA. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the main analytical measurement tells you he's just kind of – you know, he's, he's middle of the pack among starters. And what we, to go back to the whole Cleveland thing is this forward thinking organization that had a really good year two years ago. Well, how did they go in the crap house this year? Yeah. With all that forward thinking, how did they go in the crap house this year? Yeah, so I mean, I still think it's, help him. Yeah, Baker Mayfield was awful, so that was yes. a big part of it. But and he was, you know, Quasi was around when they made him the number one overall draft choice. No, I'm he, sure he, he was no, not. He, wasn't. he was, he was in not. San Francisco, you're right. Don't blame Quasi for Baker Mayfield. <laughs> no, but the uh, you know the you you also don't know what influence he had. Who, who knows? He may, must have had some in Cleveland. And I love the fact that he, he mentioned that he has a picture of Bill Walsh above him. <laughs> He's sitting there talking about collective thoughts and do all this stuff. The number one dictator tyrant in NFL history is up there. <laughs> it's so true. Wall. It's so and true. Bill was not known as a collaborator. <laughs> 
call it. If you tried to do something that Bill didn't agree with, uh, he would go up to Eddie Bartolo and get you fired. So uh, that's, uh, you know, that Bill is, Bill is certainly a good guy to have on your wall to, <laughs> to recall the powers of the 49ers, but it has nothing to do with anything you said yesterday about collaboration. Collabora- collaboration. I, I found it interesting that he wouldn't come out and say he has control over the 53-man roster. Uh, that's that was interesting. He does obviously. I mean, he knows mm-hmm. what's in his contract. He said, but uh, I yeah. really do think that he probably will, you know, go out to dinner with the coach twice a, you know, have dinner up in the office twice a week or something. I'm sure he's going to have a much better relationship than Spielman and Zimmer did because he's going to hire the guy. I think his control of the roster might have to do directly with the coach. I think if they get a coach who wants control. He might allow that person to, to you know, take I think control, he'll, he'll which probably, I think is a mistake, but I, I think he might do that. He'll probably let him win a lot of arguments. And it, it, it just becomes how do things get started? You know, when does the pressure, you know, when does, when, when does the pressure come? That's, it's easy to be happy and optimistic and, and yep. uh, all this stuff right now. Let's see what happens when the pressure comes. Birds yeah. are chirping right now. Oh, well, because just Cleveland outside. yesterday, uh, Cleveland last year, they wanted to have a parade for all those guys, and now they're now they're all on probation to get fired if they have another lousy year. They're going to run Stefanski yeah. out of there. If he has let's let's talk run. about the Cleveland thing because I, I when, you know what you said earlier. That's been my thought for a while here throughout throughout this search. Is like, are we sure we're ready to start poaching guys from Cleveland's front office? You know, but. They won in his two years there, and again, we don't know. You know, was he ten percent influential? For we don't know, yes. but but they they won eleven games, and then they won eight games. How far back do you have to go in Cleveland's history? You probably have to go back to when Belichick was there to find a time when they won eighteen games over a two year stretch, right? So right. for Cle- for Cleveland, that's like other franchises winning thirteen games in back to back. This year, though, I mean, they went in the tank. You know, they were what they lose six out of seven, something, right? Weren't they yeah, I mean, in they, good shape? Yeah. Weren't they in good shape at the middle of the season and went in the toilet? Uh, yeah, I mean, they were the it, it is interesting that Cleveland has become the epicenter of analytic thought, first with the Indians, and now with you know, everybody's had to go get somebody who worked for the Indians, right? Meanwhile, what have the Indians done? Yep. <laughs> you know, what have, That's a good point. You know, we, what have they done? They don't spend money. We obviously. poached from there before, Pat. It's a the very pitching, good point. The pitching pipeline. It's a, yeah. it's, it's a, it's, it was a three-year you know project. It's can, been delayed. Crazy can find quarterbacks. <laughs> it's unbelievable. He's got a very special knack for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's everybody. Now, he and Chernoff went to uh, college together. Is that it? Uh yeah, I don't. I don't know. He's a buddy of Chernoff's, I think. Okay. The uh, who's now the general manager of the very mediocre Indians, <laughs> who are the Guardians now? I keep, I keep reading uh, the paper saying the Guardians, and then, oh yeah. That's wait, right. what they're, league is that? Oh, that's right. That's right. They're the Guardians. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, it's uh, I'm still kind of fixated on uh, uh, Tabula Basa when I read that in the paper. Uh, that he referred to Tabula Basa earlier, uh, kind of, uh, kind of threw me off. I thought that was the guy that I like on TV that used to play in the NFL, but it, uh, it turns out it's a term for a clean slate. So I read that two days ago on his, I think it's Tabula Rasa Basa. Apparently a lot of people who actually went to college have heard of it, but I had never heard of it. And I thought, huh? What the hell is this? Please don't say that at tomorrow's press conference. I don't know. Yeah. They're taking bows, and it is funny that they won't let Ziggy out in public anymore. You think his health's okay, or is he I just that he's such a buffoon when he talks that uh, he comes off as such a stiff that uh, they they won't they won't let him. Speak. Yeah, wouldn't he? He so he wasn't. It was he even in the the field house yesterday? Was he even? Was he even like lurking around the corner? Because he certainly Let's wasn't on up on stage. You know what my big complaint is, and I didn't get out there yesterday because I didn't know, A, you shouldn't have that thing at 9 in the morning. You should get us time to get moving. But, B, you got the big (laughs) hotel next next door. You're introducing your new general manager. The cheap SOBs put up about three risers and some folding chairs. Why aren't you next door in the hotel 
feasting. Why don't they have some a little continental chef, breakfast? Why don't they have some chef serving breakfast? This is a good point. Poor, poor <laughs> a, buf- media. a buffet of sorts. Yes. This yes. is a great point. Why why are you still and doing for those this? who want them a bloody mary? You know, come on, what the hell, you cheap SOBs? <laughs> this is your general manager, and we get you get risers in the middle of the field house at your new building. Why are you still doing pressers in in your practice field indoor? Like why? Yeah, why isn't there a room for your major press conferences? You're right. Yes, there is a room. It's a big hotel right over there. Let's uh, come I'm, on, come on I'm over to the that. hotel. And if you we'll set up a little work room, you can sit in here. We're gonna feed you lunch all day. It'll be fantastic. And if and if Joe Madden was the one getting hired, if you know if if Quezzy had the Joe Madden social sense, he would have bought uh he would have bought a beer for all the media members. Yes, it would have been great. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We're uh it's uh it's uh it, it is interesting. It's it's gonna be more fun than having Spielman, I'll tell you that. Yeah, it's by the way, Spielman Spielman's been making he's he's been on uh, a couple shows. He's he was on the move in the the sticks podcast. He was on Colin Cowherd this week. Oh yeah, and and there I, I, we should Defending have grabbed the himself. Or what? Well, no, he's mostly just like analyzing the playoffs and stuff. And at one point, I can't remember what the exact question was, but you know, some I think I think Colin asked him if you look around the league, it's got to be you know, all these coaches this weekend are offensive coaches. Uh, you know, so you know, there's some good defensive coaches, but don't you have to look at hiring offensive coaches? And his immediate response, because obviously Mike Zimmer. He said, the most important thing is for the head coach to have a great relationship with the quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> that, so that was his shot at uh, Zim, was it? I'm, yeah, I'm guessing yes. I think well, the fact that that's so top far, of mind. So far, right, we got a, the, uh, the uh, Bears have a defensive coach. And who else is hired so far? Uh, somebody else. Broncos, Hackett. And the Raiders are on the verge of Josh McDaniels. How That'll about work. the th- thing with Leftwich down in Jacksonville? They're negotiating the final details. He says, get rid of the GM and bring in Adrian Wilson from Phoenix. They get rid of the GM. They bring in Adrian Wilson from Phoenix, and he still leaves. And now he's talking to the Saints. He did not complete negotiations with the uh, Jaguars. He's now talking to the Saints. I, I don't know what happened there. They, what a mess. they hired his GM. And uh, and he, he must feel like he's in a power position or something because he he left Jacksonville because he didn't have enough control over the roster, I guess. So. Yeah, I know. So he doesn't sound like a candidate to come here and be part of the, the collective <laughs> and the partnership, does he? But I uh, intentional. Well, I'm with I'm with you on the word intentional. I love uh, that's a great new buzzword. Yeah, we're no, just going to be we're going to be very intentional. Decisions. Intentional decisions. I'm going to be very intentional ripping Kirk Cousins on Purple Daily. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you know what? And you guys opened up my eyes because I kind of not don't look at the biking fandom much. This Kirk underground of that he's fabulous is is an incredible thing. That has only occurred in like the last year, right? The Cousins Crusaders. Yeah. Yes. Nothing and, and nothing is it, ever his and, fault. And Where do people like this come from? I'm 100% convinced it's political. I'm 100% convinced that if you yeah. looked up the real Kirk advocates, they're non vaccine They're all Biden fans for sure, right, Pat? Uh, no Biden fans. <laughs> in that, in that they're case. all Joe Biden fans. Yeah, I don't think so. Boy, Joe picked a good day to go to Pittsburgh to talk about infrastructure. Yeah, a, bri- a bridge collapsed. Bridge yeah. collapsed. That's not good. Mm. Mm. Somebody just rang my doorbell down there. I don't, well, you know. should I don't, get, don't, don't get it. There's no reason it, to get it, that. If you're like Judd, you'd shut the lights off and hide for the there's next There's no minutes. reason to get that door. If there's a package, they'll leave it. Worst oh, thing, man. open that sucker, and they're going to try and storm through home invasion. Don't do it. Mm. <laughs> No, that, that, In case you're wondering whether Judd has trust issues. <laughs> Tabula rasa, E A B U L A R A S A, Latin phrase often translated as clean slate, a yeah. phrase I will now use. I love yes, that. Yes, yes. And he used to be a cornerback in Denver, didn't he? I think. I don't know. That's. Uh, that's <laughs> I, I, think it'll be, I think it'll be interesting. I'm interested to see if we get any, if there's any access to him or not, though. Or if he he was a very affable guy yesterday, and apparently after the press conference, he talked to the 
media, you know, kind of did the informal thing. It'll be interesting to see if that continues or if we get the old Spielman coming out to tell us he's been getting a lot of calls before the draft and then after the draft and then right before training camp and then during bye week and that's the only time you see this stiff. Rick well, Rick should have brought Rick should have brought like an old, you know, uh like you know, wired in phone and put it up on the podium then since he can have someone call it five times during his pre draft press. Look at the phone is ringing off the hook, literally, as you phone. can see. <laughs> I cannot uh I cannot criticize anyone who's replacing Rick because I'm all in favor of it. Yep. Enough was enough. Yep. 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 All right, Pat. See Enjoy you, championship weekend. We'll talk to you next week. Oh, that's right. Champion. Don't get that door. He just, he just left. It's gone. <laughs> don't he get that left. door. Don't know. No, don't answer the door. God. Oh, man. All right. That's uh, wrapping with the racing here. See you guys.